Hey everyone, welcome to the Fibonacci series. So I'll just give it about one to two more minutes for more people to join us before we get the session started. At the same time, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to put them under the questions chat. So I have both the Q&A box as well as the chat box open, right? So if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to put them there. So we'll just give it about one more minute before we get the session started. Okay, so let's get the session started, right? So for those of you guys who are here with us, for today, we will be covering the Fibonacci series, right? So this would be the content for the educational series for January, right? So after this session, we aim to get you equipped with Fibonacci in terms of retracements, extensions, and just being comfortable in incorporating them in your analysis. Okay, so if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them under the questions chat. I have both the chat box as well as the Q&A box open, right? So I will be able to see any of your questions. So let's get started, right? So just a quick introduction of myself. I'm Lee Singh. I provide FX advisory to institutional clients. I'm also part of the team that's recognized by the Technical Analyst Awards as finalists for the best FX research. You can also reach out to me on LinkedIn, right? So if you are with us live, do put your questions under the questions chat. If not, if you're watching a recording of this on YouTube, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn if you have any questions on the sessions done on Wednesdays, Thursdays, or Fridays. So just a quick disclaimer before we get the session started. The information presented here, it's not to be treated as investment advice. It's for educational purposes only. Okay, so with that, let's kickstart today's session. So this is the agenda that we will be covering for today. So we will first do an introduction of Fibonacci retracement, right? So answering what exactly Fibonacci retracement is, is and what how is it uh, being found. And next, we will take a look at how we can incorporate Fibonacci retracement in our trading. And then finally, right, we will take a look at Fibonacci retracement in trending markets and what are the potential Fibonacci retracement ratios that we can use for take profit targets. So this is a 30 minute session. For this session, we will focus on using Fibonacci retracement to find support levels. So in this example, right, all these examples that we will be showing will be taking long positions using Fibonacci retracement to find support and how we can incorporate it with the different uh, retracement levels for our take profit targets. So before we take a look at the charts, right, let's just understand a bit more on Fibonacci retracement in general. So the idea behind Fibonacci retracement, it's that price movements in finan financial market follow a certain pattern, and this pattern can be predictable in the short term. So these patterns are believed to be a result of mass psychology, right, as well as the supply and demand dynamics of market. So if you subscribe to technical analysis, the idea is that support and resistance levels are no other than just areas where we have people coming in to buy, right, based on previous price action. If you take a look at it in terms of psychology, it's the idea that uh, when we see prices test these levels, 
previously, right, we expect the same reaction again, right, when price comes into this level. Of course, a lot of it is based on probability as well, right? So basically playing the odds in our favor. So Fibonacci retracement, it's introduced by a man, a, a man named Leonardo Fibonacci. So he was an Italian mathematician in the 13th century. So Fibonacci is also best known for his discovery of Fibonacci sequence. So Fibonacci sequence itself, it's essentially a series of numbers. And each number, it's the sum of the previous two numbers. So what we mean by this is that if you take a look at the sequence, right? So 0, 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth, you can see that the sum of these two numbers, 0 and 1, will form the next number, right? And then likewise, right? 1 and 1 itself, right? When you add them together, it forms the following number. So you just add the previous two numbers. So 1 plus 2 gives you 3. 2 plus 3 gives you 5, right? 3 plus 5 gives you 8 and 8 plus 5 gives you 13, and yeah, it goes on. So this is the Fibonacci sequence. So when we take a look at Fibonacci retracement, this itself is actually a technical analysis tool. So essentially what this does is that if you have a specific move up, let's say this leg up here, right? So essentially it divides these levels, right? Based on a certain percentage. So we will cover the exact um, percentage or exact numbers that are frequently used later. But just understand for now that when we take a look at Fibonacci in general, right? It's just a technical analysis tool where we use horizontal lines to indicate areas where prices might potentially experience support or resistance levels. So again, a lot of this is based on psychology, right? The idea that when price comes into an area, we could see a reversal, right? So this, especially when accompanied with previous price action, we can see that it gives us higher probability setups. So we took uh, take a look at this uh, Fibonacci retracement, right? So Fibonacci retracements, it's basically formed by the Fibonacci sequence, right? So they're commonly used by traders to identify potential entry and exit points, right? So for those of you guys who just join us, right, I see a few uh, people streaming in, right? So if you guys have any questions, feel free to put it under the chat box or Q&A box. So for today, we will be covering the Fibonacci series, mainly focusing on Fibonacci retracements to find support levels. We will take a look at first the basics of Fibonacci retracements in general, right? Just understanding what it is and how we can use them. And then later on, we will hop onto trading view as well to apply these examples. Okay, so if you guys have any questions, just feel free to put them under the questions chat. So now let's take a look at the Fibonacci retracement ratios. So if you take out uh take a look at uh, the charts on trading view, right? Just load the Fibonacci retracement tool which we will be doing later, right? So the idea is that you will see different ratios that are being formed. So let me maybe just bring up this tool. So here, right? So this is the Fibonacci retracement tool. You can see it here. So to the left of the chart, you can see this panel. So I'm on trading view. So to the left of it, you can see this uh, Fibonacci retracement tool. It's the third icon from the top, right? So just take a look at, uh, just load this, right? So let me just clear this drawings and we'll take a look at this to see how it goes. So this is the Fibonacci retracement tool. So the idea is that when you use a Fibonacci retracement tool, right, you need to identify a starting and ending point. So in this case, we will hop onto the specifics later. What I really want to show you guys in this example, it's basically looking at this number. So these are the common Fibonacci retracement ratios here, right? So this is default on trading view. You can adjust the settings, the color accordingly, but you can see that these numbers are basically the Fibonacci retracement numbers. Okay, so how these ratios are being calculated, right? So this are default, but if you want to understand a bit more on how these ratios are derived, right? Essentially, it's basically using one number in the Fibonacci sequence, right? Divided by the number that follows. So take a look at this example. You can see that the 23.6% is calculated. So recall the Fibonacci sequence. This is the Fibonacci sequence. So 23.6% is calculated by taking 13 divided by the following number, which is 31. Okay, so this area here. Okay, so you divide the, sorry, divide the number by 13. So 23.6 is calculated by dividing the number 13, which is the seven number in the sequence by 21. Yeah, so this, this number here, right? And uh, yeah, by the eight sequence. And then likewise, right, 38.2% is dividing the number 21 by the number 34 and so on and so forth. 
So the ratios are then used to create horizontal lines on the chart, right? So these are the ratios that we saw earlier on trading view. So these are the numbers that you see here, right? So this will form the horizontal lines, which you're seeing over here. So these are the horizontal lines. You see these lines here, right? So we do use them frequently in our live analysis sessions as well. So this is just an understanding of how Fibonacci retracement numbers are being derived, right? And what are the use of this uh, numbers, right? So essentially the idea behind this is that we can use them to find support and resistance levels. I would suggest not to trade them in isolation. The reason for that is because if you take a look at the chart in general, right? If Because these are just horizontal levels at almost every interval, right? So if I want to find Fibonacci retracement, right? So let's say I want to find a Fibonacci retracement for support. I just load this retracement here. You can see that at almost every interval, there is a horizontal line. So the idea behind this is that we try not to trade them in isolation, right? Not just taking off a specific number, because in this examples, you can see that while prices do respect some ratios, right? You can see that it respected some of these horizontal lines that actually broke through some of them as well. So ideally, what we want to see, right? Or rather, when we use Fibonacci retracement in our analysis, we want to ensure that it's combined with either market structures or support resistance levels and just understanding order flow in general. So understanding where prices might potentially be heading and you can then use these retracements to support your analysis. So the commonly used ratios, right? So when you use Fibonacci retracement, this is on the idea that prices may experience a pause or reversal at these levels, right? So in this exam, in the previous example on trading view, we saw that some of the levels were respected, some of the levels prices just ramped right through it, right? So this is just based on uh, psychological importance of these Fibonacci numbers. One that I would like to highlight, right? Especially, right? So these are the common numbers that we have: twenty three point six, thirty eight point two, fifty percent, sixty one point eight, and seventy eight point six. 61.8 itself, right? It's also what people term the golden ratio. So essentially, this is an area to watch, especially when price retrace into this level, we could potentially see a reversal of this level, right? So this is a key ratio to watch. And essentially what these numbers represent, it's a percentage of the price move, which may be retraced before the trend continues. So Maybe to explain simply on what this means, right? So take a look at this where we see this strong movement up. So again, if we want to find Fibonacci retracement, right? To find support levels, we identify a low and a high. So you can see that this is the leg of the move. So if I take a Fibonacci retracement from these two points and it gives me different levels, essentially the 50%, right? 50% is the easiest to explain. So I'll just use that example because it's more intuitive. The idea is that if prices are at 50%, it means that price actually retraced 50% of the original move. So if I were to put this into an example on the chart, right? Let's take a look at this example. So I'll just clear all the drawings and let's take a look at this. So in this example here, so let's say if I want to use Fibonacci retracement to find support. So notice this uh, move up. So this is a push up and then the retracement, right? So essentially when you are using Fibonacci retracement, the first thing first is to take a look at the market structure. You want to identify clear movement. So you can see this is a very clear move up followed by the retracement and then another impulsive move up and the retracement. When you're using Fibonacci retracement, you want to identify the move, right? The smoothest move that we have essentially starting from the lowest point. So identify the low and the highs of that move, right? And you can use the lows as the starting point for your Fibonacci retracement and the highs as your ending point. I do want to emphasize that using this, right? Right now we are talking about Fibonacci retracements to find support. Okay, so in the next session, we will focus on resistance. So right now it's just support. So when you want to draw support levels using Fibonacci retracement, you use the starting point, right, as your low. I mean, the low as the starting point and the high as the ending point. So in this example, you can see that this is the move. So I'll start from this low and end at this high. So when you do that, right, so Fibonacci retracement of this move from low to high, you can see that these are all the levels. So essentially what these levels represent and how you interpret them, it's that, so let me just remove all this drawing. So let's just focus on this leg. So this is the last move that we have and that retracement. So I'll identify the low, 
take this as the starting point and take this as the ending point. The reason why I'm using starting and ending point is because when you use the Fibonacci retracement tool, right? So if you're, you're on trading view, you want to try this out as well, right? So just take the Fibonacci retracement tool. You will be asked to identify two points, right? So this is the first point and this is the second point. So the starting point, right? Starting from the low, ending point, ending at the high. You can see that it will load these levels, right? So these are the retracement levels. Essentially, 23.6% means that prices retrace 23.6% of this entire move up. So this entire move that we have over here, right? At 23.6%, it accounts for 23.6% of this move. So 50% will be intuitive. You can see that this is 50%, which is essentially halfway, right? Half of this whole move, which is this impulsive flip. So essentially, if you were to combine market structure and the idea of discount and premium levels, right? So recall in our previous session when we talk about market structure and uptrends in general, prices will continue forming higher lows and higher highs. And the assumption is that in an uptrend, right, it will continue, the uptrend will continue. And any pullback that we have over here, it's just a price, right? to continue on the upside. So that's the idea, right? So the uptrend is to continue unless there is a change in structure where price breaks the last low that took out the high. So if not, right, you can see that in this case, right, this is how we can also incorporate Fibonacci retracement. So you identify the last move. So this is the last push up and take this low as the starting point, the high as the ending point. So when you do that, you can see that these are all the different Fibonacci retracement numbers. So when prices is in an uptrend, right, we're looking for long positions. The other thing that we do want to take note of is that within the leg itself, right, you split this movement into half, right? So this whole range, so this is the range here. Take a look at this example. This is the high, this is the low, right? So I want to split this into half, right? So this is at around a 50% retracement. So the idea is that when price, right? So price broke the last high. So the assumption is that the uptrend will continue. But what's uh, more important to note is that when you split this move into half, right? The lower range itself would be what we call the discounted zone. So essentially, if you're buying, right? You're buying at a cheaper price because prices are lower. And whereas the top half would be the premium zone. So essentially, if you are buying, right, you want to try to get below the 50% retracement because in this case, right, if prices were to continue up, you get more upside because you're entering at a lower price. So that's the idea, right? So just something to note is that if you take a look at just retracements in general, right, especially in a clear trend, right, you can see that there's a change in market structure here. In a clear trend, what happens is that the 61.8 retracement and 78.6 retracement can serve as ideal entry points. So of course, right, if you want more confirmation, you want to make sure that it is lying on a support level. And also at the same time, right, on the smaller time frame, it's showing signs of reversals. So those are just uh, something else that you can incorporate in your analysis, but I won't digress there, right? So the idea is that uh, for today, we want to focus more on Fibonacci retracement. So first, uh, first off, right, when you draw the Fibonacci retracement, you want to identify the low point, identify the high points, take a look at the different ratios, right? So the different ratios represent the percentage um, that price retrace before, you know, before going continuing to the upside, right, potentially. And just apart from just uh, identifying these levels, you want to ensure that these levels that you found, so the idea is that any of these levels, right, so if I do just do a replay button of this. Okay, so let me just remove that. So in this case, you can see that this is a retracement. We took a retracement from low to high here, right, starting from low, ending at a high point. And right now, these are all levels that prices could potentially retrace to. So all these horizontal lines, right? These are the different levels. You can see that 78.6 level would be here. So when price reaches this level, it means that it retraced 78.6% of its original move up. And if prices were to continue in an uptrend, right? Ideally, we want to enter at a lower price because it gives us more upside. So that's the idea. So you can see that all these levels would serve as support level. But what's interesting to note is that we wouldn't know which of it would hold. So take a look at this example, right? On the retracement, the 23.6%, which is this level over here, has been violated. So you can see that price broke right through it. We saw this small reaction represented by the doji. So if I were to zoom in, you can see this small reaction represented by the doji, following which there is strong selling pressure uh, shown by this bearish candle. 
right? And if I were to continue replaying this move, you can see that prices actually ripped through all these levels before testing the 78.6 and continuation for, to, the, to the upside, right? So if I were to just take a look at this, you can see that when I play it, right? So price actually tapped into the 78.6 level, which is this level, right? So once this happens, once we see this area, so price taps into it before it continues to the upside. What's imp important to note is that when you're drawing the Fibonacci retracements, you want to ensure that you want to ensure that the the levels that you drew with your analysis right are still valid levels. And what I mean by this is that when I drew these levels, you can see that price went right through all that. So 61.8 retracement, it's broken because price ripped through this level. 50% it's broken as well. Right, and then so on and so forth. 38.2, 23.6, all these levels were not respected. We just saw slight reactions before price broke and retested these levels as resistance before it continued to the downside. So if you're doing an analysis, right? So let's say if you're highlighting a specific zone, let's say I highlighted this level as a resistance turn support level because of how prices reacted here. You can see resistance tested as a support, and then again here. So if we take a retracement of this move you need to be careful or rather you need to be aware that these levels that we drew, so all these levels above are no longer valid. And the reason for that is because price already broke right through them. So when you're highlighting this area as a demand area, right, just be mindful of the different levels in between because these levels are no longer valid. And the reason for them is because price already broke through these levels. So What's also important to note is that when you do identify this Fibonacci retracement levels, you want to ensure that you combine them with either supply demand areas. So this is an example, right? So graphical levels where you can see clear interactions, the prices enter into these areas and there's a respect of this zone instead of just levels like, for example, right, this would have been a random level because it doesn't, it doesn't really say anything. So if I were to draw, put back the same retracement level that we drew, you can see here, right? So this had a different support level. So if I were to replay this button. So this area, right, that we drew the Fibonacci retracement, you can see that this, this is a 23.6 retracement, right? This is a spot support level. But if you look to the left of the chart, right, which is basically there is nothing here, the left of the chart is here. So there's basically nothing over here, right? So there's no price action here, which shows us that this is a level that could potentially hold, right? Same thing here, right? If you take a look at, let's say, the 38.2 level, which is this level here, you can see that to the left of it, which is basically look to the left of this point, there isn't any price action to show that this has been respected as a previous resistance, right? And could potentially be a support. And likewise, right, if you take a look at this example, right, let's say the 50%, right? So 50%, this would have been a potential support level because if you draw a horizontal line across, you can see that there's some kind of price action form here. So price respecting it as a resistance, the hesitation before breaking above again. So again, right, these are just things you want to take note of. Of course, there is no 100%, right? You need to ensure that this support zones, right? Because there's always a point, uh, always a chance that this support level would fail as well. So you want to ensure that when you're drawing this zone as much as possible, right? These are areas where price interacted with previously and we're seeing some kind of reaction here. Okay, so that's just something to take note of when you're drawing Fibonacci retracements. So these are the different ratios, right? So we highlighted the commonly used ratios. One thing to take note of is that when you're using Fibonacci retracement to find support, you want to identify impulsive moves and the retracement. And ideally, these impulsive moves form a clear movement up, right? And it's not, uh, it's not messy. So what I mean by this is that back to the chart example, right, on dollar cat, you can see this, this example here, right, the reason why I would take the Fibonacci retracement, so you can see first, you identify the move, so this is the move, so if I were to draw the same movement up, you can see that this is a move up, and the retracement, a move up, and a retracement, so if you want to identify of, I mean, if you want to use a Fibonacci retracement to find support, right, you want to identify the low here and the high here. So I might have, uh, you might question whether, you know, we can use a low from here and end at a high, right? There's nothing wrong with that, right? But it's not good practice. And the reason for that is because when you draw your retracement, so this is something to note, right? So when you draw your retracement, 
right? If you turn on the trend line, so I'll turn on the trend line, put it in a different color, let's say purple, right? So focus on the purple, uh, this purple line that we have, right? This trend line. So when you draw your Fibonacci retracement, so this is the purple line. Let me just make it slightly thicker so you can see. So when I draw the retracement level, right? So I, I'll, I will highlight the lows as the starting point and the high. You want to see price follow through with this trend line. So this trend line acts as a line of best fit. So as much as possible, we don't want to see huge deviation away from the line, right? Which is why it's better practice to identify the impulsive move first and then use the low and the highest point instead of just taking it off the lowest point of the entire chart and ending it, ending, excuse me, ending it at the highest point. So compare this to retracement levels that I draw. Right, so this is the first retracement from low to high. This is one, and this is the other one, right? Using this low point and ending at this high point. Oops. Okay, so these are the two retracement levels. So notice this, right? When I draw this retracement, you see this purple line. You can see that at this point, especially, this portion of the chart, you can see that here and this level, right? So if you were to take a look at this bigger purple line that we drew, essentially what happens is that price just went right across this level. You can see this huge movement here. So which is why, right, this itself is not a good practice and you try to draw retracement levels, right? In a case where this trend line, right, is being followed closely by price. So in this example, right, this would have been a better retracement than this retracement here. Right. And this retracement is not wrong. It's just that you can see that it doesn't capture the reversal points as nicely. So if we take a look at this, just comparing the levels, right? So let's, let me take a look at this. Uh, let's say the 38.2% or even the 23.6% for that matter. You can see this level. So let me just remove this, the rest of this number so that it's less confusing, right? So the reason why we want to, as much as possible, try and draw Fibonacci retracement levels with good practice is because these levels have a higher probability of pointing out the reversals. So compare this to retracement levels, right? So the retracement level that we have here, it's taken from the low and the high. So it's taken from this using this retracement and like I mentioned earlier, right, this is not a good way to draw your Fibonacci retracement because of this whole point in between, right, where we saw how price just slashed right across. So ideally, we don't want to have any zigzag patterns in between the trend, this purple trend line that you drew. So that's one, right? And the reason for that is because if you project this lines, right, to the right, you can see that this levels here. So let me just close this, right? So just focus on this, this chart. So you can see that this area over here, this portion, right? This retracement levels are not being respected at all. You can see that price just, it didn't even react to them, right? This levels, right? Just whip right through it. So this is why, right? When you, if I take a look at the second retracement level, so let me just hide this one right now and turn on the other retracement level that we drew, right? Using this retracement, this purple uh, movement here. So let me turn on this. You can see that the 23.6% in this case, right? We're still seeing some kind of acknowledgement of this zone. First is this area, right? This doji before the break below it. And then a retest of this level as a resistance, right? So the concept where support and resistance levels. And again, right over here, where you can see how price went below it, right? But still holds above this area before we saw that huge bearish candle, right? Representing that break below the level. So, which is why, right, I want to emphasize again that it's important to know where you want to start and end your retracement levels. Ideally, try to find impulsive moves. And these moves are strong uh, movement up, right, instead of just taking zigzag patterns, right, and just drawing your retracement through these levels. So, in this example, right, this purple one would be a better example because if you were to just trace out the initial movement of the market, you can see that this this would be the last impulsive move and this would be the pullback. So if we want to use Fibonacci retracement to find support, you just need to identify the lowest and highest point. And these levels that we have, right? So this common ratios would be the potential support levels. 
of course, as much as possible, you don't want to treat them in isolation. You want to ensure that these levels are also in line with your supply or demand areas. So the next thing we want to do, right, is to see how we can incorporate this in your trading or analysis, right? So the first thing first is to identify a clear trend in the market. There are different ways you can identify a clear trend in the market. The simplest way to do it is to take a look at the market structure, right? So if prices are forming higher lows and higher highs, then it's in an uptrend. If it's a lower low and lower high, it's in a downtrend. If prices are moving sideways, right, there's no clear support or resistance levels. There's no clear consecutive highs or consecutive lows, then this is a ranging market. The reason why it's important to identify this is because in a clear uptrend, right, the assumption is that the trend should continue to the upside and any pullback itself right, just serves as potential entries. Same thing if in a downtrend, right, so if prices are forming lower lows and lower highs, on a pullback, if price comes into resistance area, we could see a reversal from there. Of course, for more confirmation, right, you can always go on to the smaller time frame to try and wait for the smaller time frame confirmation before playing the shots. So if I take a look at the same example, right, okay, I have a question. So can you explain the reversal, trend reversal again using the 2338 levels? I thought trend reversal is if price go beyond a 0 0.78 level. Okay, uh, Elias, so in this case, right, this 23 and 38.2% level, it's not used to explain the trend reversal, but rather what I'm trying to show here is that the importance of picking the right points to draw your Fibonacci retracement. So let me just clear all these drawings, right? So what we did earlier is that we identified these two points. Okay, so first you want to identify the structure of the market, right? So higher lows and higher highs and take the last leg, right? The last move that we have using the low, this would be your starting point for your Fibonacci retracement and the high would be your ending point for the Fibonacci retracement. So I compared using these two points, right? So if technically, if you are to find Fibonacci retracement, I mean, if you are to use Fibonacci retracement to find support, you just need to identify a low point and a high point and draw the line across, right? Then you will be able to find these levels. But the question is that which low and high point do you use? use right do you use this low over here this is this is the highest point right so this this is uh we, there's no debate over this right but the idea is that do you use a low here or do you use this low so which is why i drew two fibonacci retracement right using this point so this is using this low as the starting point and the other fibonacci retracement i drew is here using this low as the starting point okay so just comparing the levels you can see that this retracement levels that we have over here right? Prices did not uh, did not actually adhere to this level, right? There's no reaction when price reaches this level, right? There's, it just rips right through it. Whereas if you take a look at the 23.6, right? These two levels that were obtained from this retracement. So this is the most uh, more direct move here. You can see that at this levels, right? Prices did react to this, right? Represented by the small doji and then again here. Okay, so the point of using this two retracement levels just to compare is to explain, you know, the reason why we want to pick it from the most direct movement instead of just looking at past movements. And especially so when there isn't a clear trend, you can see that this purple move that we have, right, if you just mark out the structure of the market, you can see that there is this huge movement in between, right, that just kind of whipsaws across this purple trend line. Okay, so I hope that answers your question, Elias, right? And also, I thought trend reversal is if price go beyond 0 0.78 levels. It's, uh, yeah, so that's one more thing to note as well. So if you're drawing retracement levels, right? So in this case, I'll just put this retracement level back. So in this case, right? So just now I talk about discounted and uh, premium and discount zones. So in an uptrend, ideally, we want to take a look at positions that are beyond a 50%, right? So anywhere between the 78.6, 61.8%, these, uh, these are potential entries. Of course, we're not trading it in isolation, but rather what we want to see is that these levels also line up with a uh, demand area. So if we split this move, right, 50% is essentially half of this range. So this is the whole range. So at 50%, you can see that this is half of the range. So if you're looking to buy, you want to buy at a lower price, right? So that it gives us more upside, which is why anywhere from 61.8 and 78.6, this retracement levels would serve as better entry as compared to the ones above in a long position, right? So for resistance, right, we will explore that in the next session. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. 
Okay, so when we move, uh, let's move back to our slides, right? So in this case, we can see that first thing first, we want to identify a clear trend in the market. And once the trend has been identified, you look for potential supply and demand areas and see if there are any Fibonacci, Fibonacci tools that line up with that. So in this example, right, you can see that just using this same example on dollar cat. So first we want to identify the trend, right? So you can see that prices has been on a downtrend and household, you can see lower lows and lower highs being formed. Even if I to put it in line chart and just trace out the highs and lows, right? So the significant reversal points are the highs and lows, right? So just mark out the highs and lows. You can see that this is the last high and it broke the low, right? So essentially when price breaks above this high, it's a sign that there is a change in trend right, because of a break of the last high and this high took out the previous low, so there's a change in market structure. So you can see that the confirmation of this bullish move comes over here. So price broke above the high, so that's one, right? So when price breaks above this high, it's a sign that, that we could be seeing a change in trend. And then the next thing we want to do is that you can see here, right? So price broke the last high. And once you see that there is a, this is the last leg, right? So essentially this is the break above it, right? So this is the low and this is the highest point. So what this also suggests is that this low took out the high here and this high, right? So if prices were in a downtrend, this high should hold, right? We should see a pullback into this leg with continuation to the more down, with uh, more continuation to the downside. But this is not what we're seeing, right? We saw a break above the last high and you can see that this whole movement itself, right? It's the last leg. So it's essentially the last movement before we saw this retracement. So what this tells us is that in an uptrend, right? So recall, we talk about market structure in all our previous sessions, right? In an uptrend, the lows are supposed to hold, right? So we're not expecting the low to give way and the highs are constantly being violated. So what this tells you is that if you combine market structure with your analysis, right? This is the last leg. So any retracement, as long as price holds within this leg, so as long as price holds within this leg, this is the last leg, right? So as long as price holds within this leg, we're expecting continuation to the upside. And what this also tells us is that if we are wrong, right? So if price breaks below this, this is when we want to get out of the position because it's likely that our analysis is wrong. So in this case, right, having identified the last leg and the retracement or the pullback, right? Recall that when we take a look at premium and discount zones. So when you want to look for positions where, or you when you want to buy, right, ideally you want to buy it below the, uh, below the 50%. So I'll just put this 50% as a marker, right? And then you can see that 50% is the one in blue. So basically any areas, right? The 61 and 78.6% can serve as support areas. So how would you know which levels hold, right? There are a few ways. In this example, you can see that 61.8%, which is supposedly the golden ratio, right? Price did not respect this level. It just pushed right through it. So what you want to identify, right, instead of just trading purely based on retracement levels, you want to ensure that there are also support demand areas. So in this case, right, where would the support area be? The support area is here, right? Why? Because of how price reacted previously. So you can see this, this uh, action here. So price rejected as a resistance and then tested this level again as a support. If you take a look at it in line chart, you see the same thing as well, right? There's this line where you can draw a horizontal line across or this zone, right? Where essentially you see the reaction off as a resistance and then price testing this level as a support. So what this tells me is that as long as price still holds within the zone and this zone is in line with the Fibonacci retracement, there's still chance for a reversal. Okay, so there's still chance for more upside. So realistically, right, you want to target the high as the first profit target. And then the subsequent ones can be based on Fibonacci retracements. So Fibonacci retracements, right, for profit target, I will move on. Uh, I will explain further in the other slide, right? So for now, right, what we want to, what we want to identify is first, take a look at market structure, identify the trend. If there's a clear uptrend, then you want to look for retracements to enter long positions, right? And these retracements can be found by drawing the Fibonacci retracement. So using the Fibonacci retracement tool, right? So we have been going through quite a bit on that, right? Basically taking a look at how we can use them on trading view. You want to identify two points. Identify the impulsive move. The lowest point would be your starting point. The highest point would be your ending point. And from by drawing that, you will be able to obtain the different levels. Okay, so in this, the same example that we drew earlier that we saw on dollar cat, you can see here. So let me just clear the drawings, right? So essentially this is the lowest point because this is the last move before we saw the pullback and this is the highest point. I would 
uh, you can also identify this as the lowest point, but I would advise against it because right in the same example, I mean, uh, as we have explained earlier, identifying this is not wrong, but ideally you want to ensure that for best practices, you want to ensure that this trend lines that you drew, so it's essentially this purple line that we have, right? And this is actually, uh, this can actually be found by using the Fibonacci retracement tool. So it's actually just this trend line here. All right, so it's just this, right? So you can just take this trend line and you should see, I mean, check this option and you should see that, you know, this will form and you want to ensure that this trend line that you drew, right, as much as possible, it serves as a line of best fit instead of having price whips or halfway through it. So this would be a better practice, right? So this is how... Uh, you should uh, you can draw the Fibonacci retracement tool, right? And these lines can help to identify support resistance levels, right? So for today we covered mainly on support for resistance levels. I will delve uh, dive deeper into it in the next session. So we take a look at how we can use Fibonacci retracement to find support. I've explained that the different levels that we have here, right? So when you actually draw the Fibonacci retracements, it will give you a few levels. So these are the common common levels, right? So just right click on the Fibonacci retracement and the default settings it's, uh, are these numbers, right? So these are the common uh, numbers that are often used. So this all of these levels can serve as support levels, right? But you don't want to trade them just purely by themselves. You want to ensure that there are also support or supply demand areas that line up with your Fibonacci retracements. Okay, so the other thing to note is that um, in an uptrend, right? So if, as we have explained earlier, in an uptrend, you want to look for any retracements and take the low and the high, right? So low would be your starting point, high would be the ending point, and any retracements, ideally below the 50%, right? This can serve as potential entries. And then in a downtrend, it's the other way. So we'll focus more on downtrend in the next session, but the idea is that you will be taking it uh, the opposite way, okay? And of course, Apart from just using technical analysis, we want to, I mean, apart from just using Fibonacci retracements, we want to take a look at other technical analysis uh, tools as well. For example, supply demand areas or even moving averages. So moving averages can also serve as dynamic support resistance levels, right? So you want to ensure that first you identify the general direction of the trend and use the Fibonacci retracement, right, as continuation of the trend. So in an uptrend, right, in this case, because we are discussing on how we can use Fibonacci retracement to find support, ideally you want to take a look at an uptrend, identify the last movement and see if this pullback into the, this area, right, if there's actually a demand area that's lying here, and if there are any Fibonacci retracements that line up with these levels. So we saw that example of dollar cat, right? So dollar cat uh, in an uptrend, right? So let me just bring out dollar cat on four hours. I believe it's the same example that we've gone through. So in this case, right, let me just bring this up. So yeah, so this is dollar cat, right, on the four hours. So this is the example that we've went through. So essentially looking at the change in market structure first, right, once it gives you that confirmation, any pullback within the slate, right, you can take an entry over here. If you don't want to wait for confirmation of this, on the smaller time frame, if you're taking more of swing positions or day trading, right, and you don't want to wait for that confirmation, then you want to ensure that your stop loss is placed in an area that if prices break below this level, then this is when you want to get out of the position. Because the assumption is, is that if the uptrend is to hold, price should not be breaking past the slow. Okay, so this is an example of how you can apply it. And um, on dollar cat, right? Let me just take a look at the slides. Okay. Okay, so back to our slides. Okay, I have a few questions, right? Can you review feeble retracement for gold? And what are the ratios that Fibonacci retracement can act as point of exit? So yes, okay, I'm getting to that in a while, Elias. Okay, so this is yeah the next slide, right? So acting as exits, there are two ratios that you can take a look at, negative 27 as well as negative 61.8. So in general, right, in an uptrend, these are the two ratios that you can take a look at. I'll use the same example on dollar cat to show how this works. But of course, you don't want to trade purely based off retracement, right, especially if they're key graphical levels here, right, you want to ensure that you are aware of these levels as well. So let's just take a look at the example on dollar cat, right, so using the same example. Here, right, so let me just narrow down this moves. So again, right, so these two levels which I'll 
I'll just add them. So potential take profit targets over here. Negative 27, negative 61.8. Right, some of them use negative 68, but if you want to be more conservative, right, you can just use a negative 61.8. So the idea is that when price, especially if there is a trending market, right, prices are holding above a trend line, for example, and it pulls back to either the 61.8 or 78.6, then in this case, right, potential targets you can look at will be the negative 27 and negative 61.8. So of course, right, when you draw these levels, don't trade them in isolation. Ensure that for example, right, this uh, level that we have over here. Right, so if I to unplay this button, you can see here. You can see this level, right? So in this case, right, price has yet to reach any of the profit levels. Let's take a look at other examples, right? So maybe I want to zoom into the smaller time frame. So this area here. So again, right, this is a retracement. So you can see that, again, this is the move. This is the impulsive move up and the pullback. So this is also a retracement that you can draw. Fibonacci retracement of this move, you can see that once again. Here. Okay, so this example, I want to highlight the reversal points more closely here. Okay, so lowest point, highest point. So you can see over here, right? So essentially this area, right? So what I did is that I drew a Fibonacci retracement of this move, the idea is that I just want to show this um, two levels. So I want to show that this two levels as a potential take profit target. You can see again, right? So in this example, price actually pulled back very nicely to the 61.8 retracement, this level here. So price pulled back to this level. Targets that you can consider, right? Negative 27. You can see that this in this example, right? Negative 27 would be more uh, realistic because this also lines up with a graphical high. You can see that this is the area where we saw that rejection here so even though price could go much higher right in this case right this would have been a realistic take profit target because it's also in line with a graphical level a graphical high so this is one right and also if you have to go to the smaller time frame right you can see the same examples playing out as well so let me just remove this Okay, so even if we focus on this portion of the chart, so in this example, you can see that price didn't actually pull back to the 61.8. So in this example, right, so again, I can take a Fibonacci retracement, right, projecting this move up. So if you focus on this pullback, you can see that this move, low to high, in this case, price just tested the 50%. You can see that it tested right at a 50%. It didn't actually go beyond it, right? So 50% of this level. And also if you take a look at the left, so which is why I emphasize again and again, you don't want to trade it solely based in isolation. You want to ensure that to the left of it, right, there's a level that has been respected. And you can see that this was the previous resistance and price broke above it, retested as a support. Potential levels again, negative 27, negative 61.8. In this example, you can see here, right? So price uh, went right through, tested a negative 61.8, and then it just reversed from there. Okay, so this are, this are just uh, levels that you can play around with, right? Or you can consider, you can see the same example here again, right? So there's this retracement, right? So again, you can take this move from low to high here. Again, right, where prices actually retrace to, you can see that it was the previous resistance than support level. So this actually ties in very nicely with the different uh, sessions that we covered earlier, right, on support and resistance levels. You can see that this levels here, right, it tested as a resistance and price broke above it. We tested this region as a support. If you were to take a look at it in terms of Fibonacci retracement, you can see again, right, price pulled back to the 50% here and then tested the negative 27. In this case, it actually fell short of the negative 61.8. So again, right, it's not 100%, right? There are times where it works out very nicely, but if there are graphical levels, right? So example, there are key graphical levels, right? So if you're in a long position, then you want to protect your trade or take partials when it hits this high, because this is a graphical level to consider. Okay, so just something to take note of, and you can see the same thing playing out. So you can actually backtest quite a bit on this, right? So understanding how it plays out and yeah, seeing seeing how that works. So this is uh, an example, right? Even here as well. So if you were to focus on this, you can see that again, right? This is the push up, the retracement, and then resistance turn support level. So it always comes into a, a graphical level, 
right? Because if not, we wouldn't know whether that would hold or not. So same thing, right? Retracement from low to high. Taking this move, you can see that in this case, this graphical zone, it's at a 61.8, but price spike slightly lower. But as long as it holds below this low, right, it's, it's still all right. But of course, Ideally, you want confirmation on the smaller picture. So you can see consolidation over here and then price continued higher. In this case, right, negative 27, it's here. So price reached a negative 27. Your first take profit fell short of the second one. Okay, so this is just something that you can back test with, right? So let's take a look at um, Go. Just remove that, right? So just using the same Fibonacci retracement levels. So you can see on goal, right? So maybe I'll just take a look at it on the four hours. So on the four hours here, you can see again, right? Bullish market structure, higher lows and higher highs in place. Right, so this is the last move up. Right, so if you were to take a look at this move, right? Retracement of this move. You can see here, right? If I were to take a look at four hours, this would be the area. You can see this move here. And if you take a look at it in line chart, you can see pretty much the same thing as well. So the highs and the lows, right? So it's still in a bullish market structure, but if you take a look at just pure retracement levels, you can see this example, right? So essentially what happens here, price pushed up. We saw that pullback into the 61.8 retracement and price hit the negative 27. And right now we're seeing that reversal. Okay, so this is the retracement level. We saw that pullback into this region, right? And also if it, to take a look at the left, right? In this case, this would be the resistance area, right? So I would have highlighted this as a support, I mean, sorry, resistance turned support level because of the resistance level. And then right now, prices tested it as a support, right? But in this case, right, I would probably have expected price to push slightly deeper into this zone. But in this case, you can see that it actually reached a negative 27. And right now we're seeing the same pullback. So you can again draw the Fibonacci retracement here. This is the last move and the pullback. So from low to high, this is the retracement level. So Fibonacci retracement from low to high, you can see that price broke below the 50. And right now it's coming into the 61.8 region. Right. So the support level on the four hours. So this is a potential support level here, right? So of course. If you want to wait for confirmation, go down to either the 15 minutes or five minutes. You want to see some sort of structure being formed first. As far as where we are on the 15 minutes, you can see that it's still in a bearish market structure, lower lows and lower highs being formed. So you want to wait for a clear high that's being formed, either a break of that high or prices could just continue further on in uh, on the downside. Okay, so I hope that that answers your question, Trong. Okay, so I see that we have no other questions as well, right? So just let me just do a quick summary of what we've covered so far, right? So we did an introduction to Fibonacci retracement. Key ratios to look at will be the 26 point, uh, 23.6, 38.2, 50%, 61.8, and 78.6, right? So also understand that apart from just trading this in isolation, you want to combine them with market structure. So in an uptrend, right, you want to wait for a pullback and this pullback can serve as potential entries. In this session itself, we take a look at how we can use Fibonacci retracement to find support. So identifying the impulsive move using the low as the starting point and the high as the ending point. And we also take a look at how we can use the negative 27 and negative 61.8 as take profit targets. Understand that you don't want to trade them in isolation. So if there is a level that prices are on, right, and there is a key resistance level that's just lying slightly below, you want to ensure to take that to, to take into account that resistance level for your take profit target. Either protect the position or take partials, right? So if you're actually taking a long position, right, when price, assuming that negative 27, it's slightly higher and you have a key resistance level that price reacted off previously, you want to ensure that coming into this resistance area, right, you either trail your stop loss or uh, protect your position. Okay, so, yeah, so that's all that we have for today's session, right? I see that we have no other questions as well. Okay, yeah, very well. Welcome, Elias. I'm glad that you enjoyed it, right? So for next week's session, we will be doing on uh, Fibonacci retracements for resistance. And I'll be showing you guys chat examples on that as well. Okay, so thanks everyone. Stay safe, trade safe. We will be having a live analysis session uh, tomorrow as well. So we'll be doing a review of the setups as well as how you, you can also take a look at how we incorporate Fibonacci retracements in the live analysis. Okay, so thanks everyone, right? If you guys want to sign up for the session, just go to vantagemarkets.com slash webinars. So we'll catch you guys again tomorrow. Thank you and goodbye.